Hello, peoples of the internet. We are the Emerald Guardians. My name is Jaden, and sadly, Tyler is unable to join me today. Regardless, this is the first mini episode of the channel, or so what we're calling it. Um, it's not going to be the length of a full episode. However, it's just going to be a little, little fun clip, just so that you guys can see how the game works. So today, we're actually going to be doing the basics of Subnautica. The first episode just released, and we realized that we didn't actually show a whole lot of the tutorial. Um, so, without further ado, let's get right into this. So there was the intro for those of you who didn't see it. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to jump right into this while by picking up the fire extinguisher. Um, it should be pro pretty self-explanatory as to what it does. If not, um, I, I'm not sure what to say. So let's, let's go ahead and put out the fire. And there we go. This little device is called our PDA, the uh, Personal Digital Assistant, if you will. Um, this will this will be our uh, our encyclopedia for everything. This will hold all the information we gather on all the species and plants and everything on this alien planet. So this will uh, oh this also has our inventory. That's right. So this has everything we'll need to know: beacon manager, photos, voice logs, and databanks, and everything we will need to help us on our journey. As soon as you spawn, you're inside the life pod. Um, we actually just got out of this little seat here. To directly to your right is a damaged radio. We will need a repair tool to fix that. Um, to its left is a fabricator. This is basically your crafting table, crafting place, if you will, for everything you will need in the entire game. Um, it has equipment, basic materials, and just really a whole bunch of good use general things that we will use later on in, in the Let's Play. Um, but for now, we're just gonna keep on moving. So, next we have a secondary system. This, this we need a repair tool for, but it will help us repair the entire life pod and get it back to working condition. To its left, this little red box, we have a storage container with some flares, some filtered water, and some nutrient blocks. Just some basic things to help you get off to a good start. And lastly, we have our medical kit fabricator. By opening it up, uh, every five, six minutes or so, it'll actually give you a free first aid kit and the first aid kits are very helpful I mean pretty self-explanatory as to what they do so let's again hop right into the world and dive right in so if you didn't see the entire cutscene didn't understand it um, we launched for in an escape pod from this ship it's called the Aurora and uh, once we were once we were jettisoned um, the Aurora exploded. Something, I guess, hit it or something. I'm not entirely sure what happened to it. But um, it exploded and it caused our caused our life pod some pretty serious damage. As you can see, we're kind of throwing off a lot of smoke here. But we are okay. So let's go back down. Let's get right into the water. Here we are. We are on an alien ocean planet. Let's go ahead and break some limestone outcrops. By breaking these we can get titanium and copper, or titanium or copper I should say, um, which are both very useful resources, however titanium is more useful in, in uh, many different scenarios, so it's always good to pick up some of that. Here we have some metal salvage. The metal salvage takes up in your inventory four spaces compared to some of just the ones. But when you put it through a crafting table, it can be turned back into um, four pieces of titanium, which is pretty good in itself. So, 
I'm going to go ahead and swim around for a little bit and gather just a little bit more titanium just so we have the basics for what we need to build. Alright, so we are back inside the life pod. We, uh, we've gathered a few few pieces of metal salvage, a few bits more. So let's go ahead and go to the basic material, the resources, basic materials, and at the very top you can see that we get four titanium. The top, the top read description is what we actually get back from the resource. Um, the little bars underneath it is just like a fun description of it. And then on the bottom you can see that's what it costs to build it. So let's go ahead and make a few of these into titanium. And now that we have some titanium, uh, we, we've got enough for now, so we're going to go into personal equipment. First thing I always do is build a standard O2 tank, just because it helps us out in the long run. Because um, we get a lot more oxygen from it than we would some other, other things. Now I'm going to go ahead and open the storage container, and I'm going to dump everything inside of it. We don't need to be carrying anything, or, well, we might need a nutrient block, but otherwise we don't need to be carrying anything inside with us. Let's go back out and let's go find a few more things that we will need. Alright guys, so just as you're kind of swimming around, eventually you'll, as you make your way through the safe shallows, you'll find this kind of kelpy stuff in the forest. Well, it's actually called just kelp, um, just like in real life. And uh, the biome is actually called a kelp forest. So once you've made your way out of the safe shallows and into a kelp forest, you will see a lot of kelp and some a new creature called the stalker. Now what we're after here in this new biome are these kelp are these, uh, no, sorry, not the, these, uh, creep vine seeds. Um, so I'd go ahead and pick up three of those, and, uh, I always make my way back to the base. If for any new player to start just starting the game, I would highly recommend going here as soon as you get some titanium going and you get your air tank, um, and you get your air supply up, because this will help you make fins, this will help you make a few other resources, and it's overall just really useful. As we're swimming back, I just noticed in this little cave here, this item called quartz. Now, quartz is very, very valuable. It can, it is probably this, in my opinion, the second most used resource besides titanium. And to be honest, it's not that readily available in most places. So for it, whenever you get the chance or whenever you see it, I highly recommend trying to pick it up if you can. Oh, and uh, this guy over here, this is what a stalker looks like. They're typically found in the kelp forest, but this one just seems to be hanging around in the safe shallows. Uh, yeah, he's, he's kind of aggressive. He's not, he's not, he doesn't want to be friends today. So, we're just going to go ahead and uh, leave him alone for now. So, once you've made your way back to your life pod, go ahead and go to the resources, basic materials, and go to silicone rubber. This is what we're after. So, we get two pieces of silicone rubber per seed cluster that we, um, that we gathered. And with this, You'll see in just a second, we can make fins. Oh my goodness, guys. Fins are just amazing. They're, they're just amazing. It also, um, getting silicone rubber also allows us to get a survival knife, which is very helpful. And, uh, yeah. It's overall just pretty good stuff for now. Alright guys, so the next thing I'd recommend doing once you have your survival knife is I would recommend trying to go for the habitat builder. Now, typically you'd want to get some of the other tools first, but personally me, I'd gather a lot of resources and so I'd want the habitat builder as soon as possible so that I can then use those other resources for a better purpose. So, we're going to knock the, we're going to knock the resources off one by one so you all know how to get them and then we'll go ahead and build us ourselves a, hab a habitat builder. So, the computer chip. It's, uh, it's the first material here. Let's go into resources, electronics, 
and uh, computer chips right here. So we need two table coral samples, one piece of gold, and one copper wire. So again, we're going to go straight down the list. We're going to knock off all the materials there so that you guys know how to get it, and it'll be nice and easy. So, and this is also why we need a survival knife, by the way, because we can't make the, we can't get some of those resources without the survival knife. So as you start just, uh, just casually swimming around the, the safe shallows, eventually you'll find these uh, these streaks of red on the sides of rocks, and the, this these corals right here, they're table corals. So bring this one down. Let's go pick up that one. Hit it again. Pick up this one. There we go. We now have two table corals. All we need, not bad. The next thing we needed on the list was gold. So let's go ahead and let's go find some of that right now. Alright guys, so we are approaching where we would get gold, which is, in my, what I've found it works the best is the kelp forest, but maybe that's just me. So, like how we found the limestone outcrops inside of the safe shallows was able to hold titanium and copper, well, inside of some deeper biomes, such as the kelp forest and a few others around here, there are things called sandstone outcrops. Now these sandstone outcrops can hold three resources, silver, gold and lead now what we're after right now is gold so hopefully i'm and you know i'm hoping we can get it in one of the first few tries but we will just have to wait and see until we find some Here we are. Here is a sandstone outcrop. So let's go ahead and break it. Uh, we got lead this time. By the way, the uh, sandstone outcrops, they're more likely to be found in the uh, kelp forest caves than the rest of it. Than the rest of the biome itself. Like on the edges like I was looking before, um, they're actually more likely to be found in caves. Ooh, silver. That's good. Um, we will need some silver uh, for part of the uh, wiring kit. So if you happen to grab two pieces of silver, that just makes your job a little bit easier later. As you can see here, I'm swimming through the kelp forest and I've made a few friends. Um, they're not actually friends, I'm just, just kidding. They're actually really mad at me for invading their space. Um, but if you just keep swimming with the fins, then you can just out swim them and you don't have to worry about them. Um, so, let's just continue to find some sandstone outcrops like this one, and uh, see, ah, oh, there we go, we got our piece of gold. Well, alright then, so the last piece of the, uh, of the computer chip was actually the copper wire. Now, as, uh, as fun as that sounds to go find in the out, in, outside or whatever, um, you can't actually find it outside. Um, you actually do have to craft that with, da 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 two pieces of copper, one of which I just got right there. So let's go find another piece of copper and let's craft this computer chip. Alright, so we are now back in the life pod. Let's go ahead and go to electronics. And uh, as you can see, we do need one copper wire, but I gathered some copper while we were out there. So. Let's go ahead and craft ourselves a copper wire, and then we can make the computer chip. Alright, so the computer chip has been made, now we're going to go ahead and make the wiring kit. Now if we go to resources, electronics, and then wiring kit, you can see I got... Oh, I already have two pieces of silver ore. I found them while I was trying to get the gold for the computer chip. But they can be found in the same places, just like the sandstone outcrops, inside the kelp biome. So now we go down here and we see that we just need a battery. Battery's not that hard to make. So let's go to uh, resources, electronics. It's the second one down. It takes one copper ore and two acid mushrooms. Now, that acid mushroom might look familiar because they're all over the place. You can grab the big ones, small ones, doesn't matter. We just need two. Now, me being me, I'm gonna go ahead and make two batteries. 
um, because the, the batteries do lo do lose charge over time, and I want to have one just in case the habitat builder runs out later. So once we have all the parts of the habitat builder, let's go ahead and make it. One computer chip, one wiring kit, and one battery later, we have ourselves the most powerful tool in the game. Let's go ahead and go over to our storage container, and let's dump off all, well, okay, we gotta grab all the titanium we can first, dump off all the extra resources. Well, except the lead, but you'll see why in just a minute. Alright, so we are now inside the water. As you can see, we are stock full of lead. And we're just going to go find so find ourselves a good place to build a base. Not something not too bad, but something we can later build off of. Because, you know, we want to plan for the future. We want to build a big base later. So, let's go find that place now. Alright guys, that actually wasn't too bad. I already kind of, when I was looking for some sandstone outcrops, I actually already found a space that I really liked. So we're going to go ahead and use this one right now. It's, uh, it's just right outside the safe shallows. This is the safe shallows biome, this is the kelp forest, and this is a grassy plateau. Um, so they're all really, really close together right here, and I just kind of like this little... Um, I got two walls on the sides, and I got easy access to the life pod. I got a few caves around here, but... I just, I really like this spot in general, so we're going to go ahead and build a foundation. I think my foundation will look pretty good right, right about here. This looks good. Alright, so as you can see in the top left, we got a plus two to base hull strength. It is now 12. Um, so foundations, and up in the top left, they take two titanium and two lead. That's why we needed the lead when we were searching for other things. Uh, reinforcements takes one lithium and three titanium. We'll talk about that in a minute. And uh, there's there's one other piece of the base that all um, they give you reinforcement. They help reinforce your base so you don't have to use a whole bunch of resources or uh, so that your base doesn't leak or whatever, which is really really helpful. Because who wants a who wants to build a big base underwater and then not have it function because everyone inside drowned. Yeah, it's not not the most fun thing. So, what I what I typically always do first is uh, I build four X compartments. Both of them, all of them, will take three titanium, but it gives us pretty good space on the inside. And uh, frankly, with uh, in these beginning stages, we can use all the space we need. So, let's go ahead and build that. And now you can, as you can see, we just do have to still a lot of titanium. I, uh, I kind of overestimated how much we need, but... So now we're going to go back to the base. Um, I actually overestimated how much titanium we need. I didn't realize I brought that much. And uh, we're going to grab four pieces of copper and five pieces of quartz, and we will be right back. Alright guys, so once you arrive back, you're going to go ahead and go to your storage container or wherever you're storing your stuff. Grab one, two, three, four, five pieces of quartz and one, two, three, four pieces of copper. Now we are all set to do everything we need. I am going to take the rest of my resources just in case I need them later. Oh, actually, we do need to take a drink of water, so we go ahead and do that now. Vital signs stabilizing. And now we're going to go build the rest of the base. <laughs> So now that we're back at the base, we're going to go ahead and put a hatch on this thing. The hatch allows us to enter the base. And actually, you know, as much as I'd like to put it on one of the sides, I think I'm actually going to put it on the top. I think entering from the top would be pretty cool. Can we can we do that? Oh yeah. Can we just look up and we can just leave. This will uh, this will also allow us to see um, if it's day or night, which is pretty helpful. So now. In case you didn't see, we, we've been on base pieces this whole time trying to figure out what we're going to construct and such. Well, now we're going to go to the exterior modules, and we're actually going to build some solar panels. These will provide our base with some power so that we can do the g basic general needs and have electricity, oxygen, and all that fun stuff. So, I'm going to go ahead and build two solar panels. Power restored. All oh, and we are not going to run out of oxygen, because that would be bad. 
There we go. Alright guys, so base is looking pretty snazzy for now. I'm, uh, I'm liking where it's going, so we're going to go to uh, it's, uh, interior modules, yep. And uh, we are going to make some wall lockers. These will probably be your uh, first set sense of uh, real storage until you can get a huge supply of quartz. I'm talking massive supply of quartz and uh, titanium so that you can then make some uh, of the real lockers. What I like to call them anyway. But uh, wall lockers work just fine for now, so let's go ahead and build a few of those and get ourselves organized. Alright, now that we're a bit organized, we're going to go back to the base. We're going to grab all of our resources and come back so we can finish getting ourselves set up. Oh, and uh, in case the use of a flare wasn't obvious, um, it provides a whole bunch of light for the entire area, so, eh, pretty useful. And it does kind of glitch through the uh, walls. Not, not entirely sure about that. Alright, so once you are set up and you are just about ready to get yourself going, I would recommend building a few more things. If you go to your inventory, you can see that we actually do have everything that we could craft in the crafting table and more here. So scrolling down, we will... Uh, Scrolling down and up, we'll see everything we can build. Not good at tools. I would recommend getting a scanner, a repair tool, and a flashlight. I would, those are the few, last few things I'd recommend getting now. Um, the scanner requires a battery and titanium. We do already know how to make both of those, so let's go ahead and... Uh, do not have a battery. We do have an extra battery. We need to, to grab some titanium, so let's grab some titanium. When we get back to the base, we will... Uh, when we get back to the life pod, I mean, we'll be sure to build that. But let's see what else we can build for now. To build a repair tool, we need some silicone rubber. That's why we grabbed some of the seed vine, seed, or creep vine seed clusters earlier, so we can have some silicone rubber for now. Some cave sulfur and some for, and some titanium. We will grab some cave sulfur on the way to the life pod, just so I can show you all where that is. And lastly, we'll need some glass. Now, glass, if you scroll up, is made by two quartz. As I said, glass and quartz used a lot. I mean it, like, I've never had any resource used more than them and titanium. So, let's go ahead and go find ourselves some cave sulfur and, uh, and some quartz. Ah, quartz right next to our base. N nice and easy. Probably, probably should have thought about that. Um, quartz is super readily available around the, in the, uh, grassy plateaus, so just, uh, just another thing there, it's really, really readily available inside the red grass. And to be honest, it's not that readily available, 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 it's not that readily available. And lastly, K of Sulfur. Now, um, what you're looking for, uh, I mean it's night time so it's a little harder to see on my screen, but what you're looking for are those kind of flowers. They shoot out these fish called crash fish. Um, they are there to defend um, the, plant, the plant itself. Oh, hello. Hey! Yo, you can just back off, back off, back off. Oh my gosh, everything is attacking us. Alright, well let's go ahead and grab it quickly. So inside the flowers, you will find cave Sulfur. You'll find these in the caves, of um, in the caves of the safe shallows. All right, so once you're back at the fabricator, going into the fabrications, go ahead and build yourself a piece of glass, and go ahead and build yourself some titanium, or if, if you didn't already, just pick up little individual blocks. Now, as you can see, we can build the scanner, the flashlight, 
And wait, what am I missing? What am I missing for the repair tool? Oh, the silicon rubber. I left that at the base. Alright, let's see if we can build it now. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Personal. Yep, there's the repair tool. Alright, let's get ourselves situated. We want that on one. I like the scanner on two, have to build her on three, repair on four, and flashlight on five. Oh, there we go. Alright, so I, I don't know if you saw during the time lapse, I did pick up some fish that were swimming around. Um, the bladder fish can be used to make filtered water. Really nice, easy source of water, can, they're quick to grab in the safe shallows, and they're a really good source of water later on. The other fish I grabbed, it doesn't really matter what kind of other fish, because you can cook any of them, was the cooked boomerang. So let's go ahead and make that, and that'll be our first um, sources of water and food for now. And as you can see, we're, we're, we're doing pretty good. We're, we're rocking it right now. So, let's go back to the base and let's finish up. guys that'll just about do it um, we probably actually won't continue using this this world as base um, this was just like an example setup but one last note is uh, with the scanner and the, all the new tools you got you can use the repair tool inside of the life pod so you can repair that a nice little surprise waits for you uh, the story mode flashlight good for uh, using things and the scanner um, this is probably this, this is the encyclopedia of the game the thing I was talking about the PDA in the beginning um, and you can use this to scan fragments of things found uh, found around shipwrecks all throughout the world. You can also use this to scan fish, and use it to scan many many other things. Ooh, creature egg, um, such as even these like these you know these sandstone outcrops. I mean, you can scan literally everything in this game. Uh, so with that, I think I'm gonna go ahead and call it an episode here. Um, I mean, if you guys want to see more more tutorials, just uh, let us know. But for now, that'll be us signing off. So, my name is Jaden, we are the Emerald Guardians, and I will see you all in the next one. See ya!